Hi, and welcome to another episode of Hot Takes with me, The Silver Fox. You're going to like this one. We've talked before about Hamza Yousaf's ridiculous hate crime bill, how it is basically unconstitutional, how it will fail at the first hurdle uh, because of the European, uh, European Court on Human Rights, how it is almost entirely unenforceable, uh, even though the police will be obliged by the act to investigate, which is why, of course, uh, we can destroy it almost immediately day one by just making constant calls, every tiny little grievance, make it a hate crime, and eventually it just has to die. It won't work. But why I'm laughing about this is the irony is that um, it's going to damage one particular group, and that is Hamza Yousaf's mates. We're going to take a look at this story because I think the uh, I think the irony is delicious because this guy is trying to break in this this hate law. Basically, he's trying to do it to stop people hating on people like him, but it's actually going to be people like him who are going to fall victim to it because they just can't help themselves because they are all filled with hate. As we know, indeed, is Hamza Yusuf. Let's take a look at this and see how it is an absolute wonderful own goal by the idiot in charge. Here goes. And I just love this because we know that this is going to fail. This is going to be an absolute road crash from day one. It is the most wonderful piece of um, stupid uh, legislation any moron could have ever bring in. And boy, is he a moron because he can't help himself. He hasn't, he isn't even bright enough to be a moron. I'm, I, I'm, you know, I might downgrade him, but we'll keep a moron for the moment. But we'll see how it goes. He's certainly value for money, though, isn't he, folks? Anyway, Hamza Yousaf's bonkers, stupid hate crime bill could backfire as the pro-Palestine chant stirs up hatred. Because, of course, they don't have to prove hatred. They only have to prove it stirs up hatred, is likely to encourage hatred. And all we have to do is look at these people and say, that is a hate crime. That, they say, is a hate crime. And the police are obliged by law. They have to investigate and report. They have to. There's no getting away. It isn't left to discretion. They, with the stupid idiot that uh, brought this law in, Hamza Yousaf, has been <laughs> basically shot himself in the foot because he wanted to make sure that, oh, somebody said a word against a Muslim. Oh, it must be investigated. How's that going to work out? Oh, it's going to be delicious. So the First Minister has defended protest where chants like from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free, have been heard. But the slogan can be an offence from February. And the police, like I say, are obliged to deal with this. There's no, uh, there's no discretion anymore. Hamza Yousaf's controversial hate crime bill is set to backfire as pro-Palestinian chants could be deemed stirring up hatred. No, they most certainly are, because nobody has defined what hatred is. This is, the, this is the stupidity of this law. And so all I have to do, no, that's hatred. I find that hateful. I'm, I think that's, that's hate, that's hate, that's got to be arrested. And they go, oh, no, it's not hate. I go, no, no, you can't define what hate is. It is up to the person who claims it is hate who defines what hate is. The wording of the bill. This is where Hamza Yousaf proves once and for all what a complete dick he is. Anyway, he said he was beyond angry that they'd been described as hate marches. He keeps using that term beyond angry. I don't know what it means. Uh, it's like beyond angry, Ooh, miffed, irked, irate, who knows? Uh, but anyway, they are hate marches though, because obviously support for Hamas is support for genocide of the Jews. That's hate. Call it what you like. Anyway, he said it was described as hate marches by the former Home Secretary, Suella Braverman, and she was right. Uh, however, an academic reckons some slogans used by anti-Israel activists could fall under the new laws being enforced from February. Oh, Hamza, how hard it is for you to go through life being as stupid as you truly are. But for us, it's as entertaining as hell. You are the man that launches a thousand videos every time you open your stupid mouth. So do keep, please, opening your stupid mouth. Uh, from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free is seen as a reference to the creation of a Palestinian state that stretches from the River Jordan to the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, in fact, Jordan is Palestine. And if you truly want the solution, pick up all the Palestinians in Gaza and the West Bank, 
Put them in Jordan. There you go. All sorted. Jordan might not like it, but they're the ones who see, who say it's the river to the sea. The river of Jordan is in Jordan. Hey, let's throw them in there. Let's give them all to Jordan. It's where they want to be. Uh, anyway, uh, it is viewed as offensive by many Jews who say it implies the destruction of Israel. And remember, in only two weeks' time, you're going to be celebrating uh, the birth, well, most of you, I'm sure, will be celebrating the birth of a, an undocumented Jew uh, who lived in Palestine. Um, so any of the claims that, oh, Israel only existed, Jews only been there since 1948, kind of uh, not entirely true, is it? Anyway, um, Dr. Stuart Walt, wait, sorry, Dr. Stuart Waiton, a sociology and criminology lecturer at the University of Abate, believes the catchphrase is exactly like the sort of thing that could be a crime under the act. All it has to do, every time anyone says it, Everyone just say, phone the police. I've just heard a hate crime. This is definitely hate crime. I feel threatened by it. I want this investigated. They are obliged to do so thousands of times a day. Every single person. So every person who reports has to be investigated. And they are obliged by the act to report back to the person who reports the crime. How long do you think this hate crime bill is going to last? <laughs> Tuesday? I mean, seriously, three days, five days, might make a week. Who knows? Uh, anyway, speaking to the Scottish Daily Express, uh, Dr. Waiton added, of course, this will depend on how this is interpreted. And as the police appear to interpret woke hate as fine, they may let it pass. A Christian or a feminist saying something about transgenderism, on the other hand, uh, well, while hating this chant, I would defend the people's right to say it. Mr. Youssef was asked about the marches when they were arranged to coincide with Remembrance Day. The SNP leader said at the time, describing those marches as hate marches is disgraceful and unacceptable. No, it's accurate it is completely accurate they were designed on that day to inflict hate and threatening behavior on the on the decent people and the indigenous people of scotland anything else is uh, it is it, it, and to describe it as anything else other than hate is wrong and the un charter actually says that the rights of the indigenous must supersede the rights of the immigrant un charter of course that was brought in to stop white people colonizing other people other countries but it's there, and so it should stop other people uh, colonising this country. So we can still use that law to our benefit. Anyway, he says, yes, in every single march, I'm afraid you'll get one or two idiots who will do and say something that we will all universally condemn. And we must condemn it. And we must phone the police. And we must describe it as hate. And we must demand that they investigate it and demand that they report back in the 72 hours as specified in the bill. Force them. And then when they don't, ask them why. Take them to court. Demand your rights. Demand that they uphold the law of the land and ask them why they refuse to uphold the law. Is it because it is anti-white and therefore, in their eyes, acceptable? That will be a that will be a court case waiting to happen. And of course, the moment it gets to anything gets to court, this whole law will be thrown out because someone all they have to do is quote the UNCHCR. There you go, busted. Oh, not the UNCHCR, the uh, the EHCR. Uh, the ECHR. David, four letters, get them right. The ECHR, the European Convention on Human Rights. There's also the United Nations Charter, which also comes into it, of which Britain is a signatory. There's all sorts of things, all sorts of protections. This law is so dim, but then so's the man who brought it in. Anyway, Sammy Stein from the Glasgow Friends of Israel group said, not opposing the river to the sea chant, as well as other slogans like from Glasgow to Gaza victory uh, to the Infada, was an example of bias against the Jewish community and the Jewish state of Israel. And he insisted they should fall under the Hate Crime Act legislation. Anything can. The, the act is so badly written that you can make everything hate. And I intend to. Oh boy, am I going to have fun with this. And we all can. We all know that this is going to be absolutely fantastic. I'd be interesting to see as well. Here's an interesting one. Just a tangent time. Imagine it's the old firm and the Celtic fans are up there and they're chanting something and, they, and every every man jack in the ground wearing blue picks up the phone and reports them to the police and says it's a hate crime. Let me tell you, Celtic Park could be closed down overnight, couldn't it? That'd be a shame. I do not pick a side between those two. If, I, if I'm true, I'm blue, but up the jags, so... Uh, also, also the greatest, the greatest team ever to play anywhere in Scotland. 
follows mechanics. Uh, anyway, he said, in my experience, he said, the Glasgow Friends of Israel stall on Buchanan, Buchanan Street. Buchanan? Who the hell's Buchanan? Buchanan Street. That the people shouting uh, from the River to the Sea slogan have absolutely no idea which river and sea they're referring to. This, however, is a call for the complete annihilation of Israel and its replacement by a Palestinian state. They're calling for genocide. Just show them the pictures of Sobibor, of Auschwitz, of Baden-Baden, and tell them that's what they're actually calling for. Make them watch the video of what Hamas did to the Israeli children and the, and the innocent children there and their parents. Make them watch that and then tell them that's who they're supporting because they're all scum. Anyway, I'm enough of that. I'm not going to get onto a hard subject to finish it with. We'll just sit there and remember, he's a dick, filled with moron ideas, and he's brought in an absolutely unworkable law that is just going to cause so much hassle. And we are going to massively abuse it until it's cancelled. And that'll be another embarrassment for him. But then I don't care. He's just a wanker. Coming up. Now, something we must all do is to listen very carefully and watch very carefully what Hamza Yousaf does and says from now on. Um, he did the anti-white speech, uh, you know, everyone white, 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 absolutely uh, a racist rant, an anti-white racist rant that he said. Now, I think, and I'm going to say fortunately, we don't have um, ex post facto uh, in British law. Uh, that is to say that effectively everything you do is legal. Uh, unless it then is subsequently made illegal. Uh, and by then, what it means is, by ex post facto, they can't say, well, actually, there are an exception, but I'll come to that. Uh, they can't say this hate crime, for example, that comes in in February, we can't use that to then say to him that was hate speech because it occurred before that law was brought in. Uh, and that's quite right, uh, generally. There are a couple of exceptions, and I think one of them was war crimes, um, and I think, oh, God, my train here. 1990, they brought in a War Crimes Act. I think it was one of the last things Thatcher actually managed to get in. Uh, they brought a War Crimes Act in that any British subject, regardless of whether they were British subjects or not, during the Second World War, could be tried for war crimes. Uh, it meant if they were a German or an Italian or whatever they were, if they sub subsequently became a British citizen, they could be tried for it. I think that's the only ex post facto law we have on the books. But going forward, of course, it means that we can watch him. And every time he says anything that we think has got an, even an inkling of hate, we report it and claim it as race, uh, you know, or, or whatever it is. It's a hate crime. Report, report, report. And every SMP, not just him, all the SMPs report them. Hate crime, hate crime, hate crime. Sounds like I'm in a disco in the 90s, doesn't it? Techno, techno, techno. But do it, do it, do it. Make it happen. Report them because the police are obliged by this law to investigate. And let's make them suffer. Let, let's make everyone in the SMB know what an appallingly bad idea it was by an appallingly thick man who they elected into high office because they're all thick. But it is, it's just a, it's a wonderful bit of time. We're going to have so much fun. Friends, join me. Join me and have fun with this. But for now, I'm going to sign off there. We've got another video to do. Uh, so yes, um, thank you very much for watching. Do hit the subscribe button and I will speak to you later. Bye.